So let's begin with Catherine Applin. Good evening. My name is Catherine Applin. On the behalf of my fellow classmates and our faculty advisor, Lynette Witter, I would like to welcome you to the final briefing for our capstone work conducted in partnership with Isla Urbana. We are excited to share with you this project on the sustainability benefits of rainwater harvesting and to, to explain how our research led us to a series of recommendations that can help our client optimize its operations as it moves forward. The structure of tonight's presentation will first cover the context of Mexico City and our client, followed by the introduction of our vision and the timeline of our growth plan. Mexico City is plagued by a series of water-related issues, such as aquifer depletion, flooding, subsidence, the high energy cost of water provision, as well as aging infrastructure. Nearly 12% of the Mexico City households are not even connected to the central water grid, which means that they must rely on water delivery trucks called pipas, which are expensive, inefficient, and carbon intensive. Our client, Isla Urbana, is a young and ambitious organization. Founded in 2009, their mission is to ensure a future with access to clean water by implementing rainwater harvesting systems in low-income communities across Mexico. They contribute a bottom-up solution to complement large-scale governmental projects, providing families with water independence and security. Through the installation of household rainwater harvesting systems, they play an important role in improving conditions around the ongoing water crisis in Mexico City. Thus far, Isla has been concentrated on making a positive impact at the individual and community level. They have also worked hard to expose rainwater harvesting as a viable option to mitigate water access issues, and they have succeeded. Rainwater harvesting is now on the agenda of the Mexico City government. With 2,800 systems installed, their efforts have improved the lives of thousands of people but our research shows that they are capable of reaching an even greater potential. In order to quantify this potential, we ran a series of water budget models for the city. Our research showed that if Isla were able to install systems in the equivalent of 50% of the homes not connected to the central water grid, it would reduce the aquifer drawdown rate by almost 2%, as well as satisfy 8% of the citywide water demand during the rainy season. But its current capacity, it would take Isla 157 years to reach this goal. With this in mind, we knew that Isla must grow. And here's where our vision comes into play. To optimize the functioning of Isla Urbana through a series of management and funding interventions, which will spur growth measured by an increased installation capacity in a diversified client base, and allow Isla to unlock the aggregated benefits of sustain the aggregated sustainability benefits of rainwater harvesting. The challenges Isla faces can be separated into two categories. Those that deal with the organization itself, such as a lack of business experience, a cumbersome organizational structure, and the need for additional capacity throughout. And those that deal with funding, as Isla is almost exclusively dependent on the government for its projects. These challenges translate into a rate of installations of only 18 systems per week. In order to grow Isla and thus achieve the potential sustainability benefits of rainwater harvesting, we have put together a set of tools for the short, medium, and long term. This is a snapshot of our timeline for Isla's growth from now until 2030. Each strategy that we have provided builds on the one before creating momentum and removing barriers as the organization charges forward. This allows an increased installation capacity per week, which is represented by the number within each cistern. In the short term, our recommendations are oriented towards organizational improvements that will allow operations to run at their optimum level. 
We have provided a variety of tools to standardize ISLA's current pilot program within the delegation of Tlalpan. We first ran a CBA and a GHG analysis to gather relevant data for the argument of expanding ISLA within Tlalpan. Our CBA showed that installing systems in 50% of the homes in Tlalpan would provide a $36 million net present benefit to the government over the next 30 years, as opposed to continuing the PIPA water truck delivery system that is currently in place. The GHG analysis showed that PIPAs operating within the delegation account for 1.5% of total large truck emissions within the city. These data points help ISLA to make their case not just for a social impact, but for an economic and environmental impact as well. Our tools focused on improving their internal capacity include an interactive monthly calendar, which encourages standardized data collection, a new program entitled IU Care, which ensures systematized product offerings, and finally, the rationale behind the appointment of a COO who would bring business expertise and systems thinking to further refine the organizational structure. Up until this point, Isla Urbana has received the vast majority of its funding through governmental projects, which have provided great opportunity and access when granted, but often arrive with difficult timing and budget constraints. We believe it is essential for Isla to explore other funding options that will insulate its business in the case of changes of governmental leadership that may be less receptive to rainwater harvesting. Our medium-term goals focus on diversifying ISLA's funding sources and then spreading operations outside of the delegation of Tlalpan into the southwestern portion of Mexico City, the area with the highest annual rainfall. In order for ISLA to be attractive to other types of funding, they must first increase their transparency and accountability, which we suggest should be done through an annual financial report. We have also provided an analysis on green mortgages and microfinancing, which will allow them to pursue projects outside of the government and thus lower their reliance on the city and increase their stability. To assist in their geographic expansion to other rainy areas of the city, we recommend the introduction of bespoke products which will increase their brand recognition and their potential for revenue. The tools that we have provided in the short and the medium term will position ISLA in a strategic way to fully take advantage of the opportunities that we have identified. And the long-term portion of our plan focuses on the challenge of meeting ISLA's mission of providing rainwater for all. Our long-term deliverables include a group of profiles which explore a variety of actors from international organizations to impact funds. This data will help ISLA to communicate effectively with a diverse group of possible partners. A roadmap lays out a plan for financial sustainability and a kit on media expansion will help to make rainwater harvesting technology understood and accepted. If ISLA follows our plan, we believe that aggressive growth is possible it will move them from the linear growth they are now experiencing to exponential growth by year 2025. This graph shows a visual representation of what that might look like. With the help of the managerial tools and the recommendations that we have laid out for growth and diversification, we offer Isla Urbana an opportunity to realize economic sustainability and to quantify its offer of contributing to the environmental sustainability of the water system in Mexico City. With a significant acceleration in systems installed, ISLA will be better positioned to build the conversation about, around a new people-centered alternative infrastructure for water collection and use. And all along, as it has wanted since its founding, ISLA Urbana will continue to make a positive impact on the lives of those that call Mexico City home. Lluvia para todos. Thank you. Okay, we're taking questions for Catherine. Uh, if you do have a question, please wait for the mic. Good 
You mentioned the water trucks being a carbon producer for the transport. Are those government water trucks or are those private sector trucks delivering water? Um, they are private sector trucks, but the government pays for the water to be delivered to the areas that do not have access to the central water grid. And so they're actually really inefficient because they can only fill up once and then provide water to one family and then have to go back to the filling station before they can fill up again and then provide water to another family. Can you expand on what you mean by systemized product offering? Uh, yes, so currently ISLA is a bit disorganized and so when they provide a system, they're not always providing all of the things that they could be, which is um, a, a filter that could be changed or a um, documentation on how they may, the family may use the system properly. And so our idea is that it's really important for them to have a packet that goes to every family exactly as it should be. And so we've done some research for them on, on what that should include. Great presentation, thank you. Can you talk a little bit more about the rainy season? You mentioned it a couple of times and how that impacted your both your um, greenhouse gas assumptions and your aquifer drawdown. I'm assuming there is, if there is a rainy season when it's not raining, the water will have to get to them in some other way. So what your assumptions were behind that? So the aquifer drawdown rate is taken um, if I'm correct, not in the rainy season, so in the dry season. But um, depending on the size of the cistern and the number of members in the family, it, it depends on how long the, um, the family is able to use the water. Some, some families are able to use it for an entire year without ever needing other water, whereas other families uh, can only use it for six to nine months. So one of the things that's important for us to translate to Isla is that that's data that they really need to be capturing because they don't have it uh, for all of the families. So we only had a rough snapshot and we used that as our data. Okay, great job.